Mortal Kombat, Doom, Grand Theft Auto. These are just some famous, or should I say infamous, video games that are known for their violence. But do they really promote violence in kids? Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman, a former West Point psychology professor, says that they do. He calls shooter video games murder simulators. Now, I know it's easy to think that violent video games do promote violence with kids. I mean, we've all heard violence against violence, right? Well, not so fast. As a mother, I'm deeply concerned about this issue. But I wanted to approach the subject thoughtfully, with thoughtful parenting in mind. I didn't just want to make a knee-jerk reaction, but I wanted to get some information before I made a decision for my kids. Uh, so my viewpoint as a parent also is a little different from most of you, uh, you guys here. I mean, when I play video games, I got motion sickness from playing Mario Crash Kart, so I'm not really much of a gamer. But you know, most of us here have played video games, so we all have at least that in common. But what I want you to know today is that video games, even violent video games, do not cause violence in children. I'm going to share some facts and figures to back that up with you guys. And I'm also going to share why this myth is so pervasive and why it's perpetrated, uh, perpetuated in our society. Uh, I also want you guys to know that kids know the difference between reality and fantasy because they uh, find in video games. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the fact that uh, these research studies are flawed. So let's talk about these gamer kids first. They're pretty bad and crime's getting worse, right? And the games are to blame. Well, not according to the numbers. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, juvenile violence is actually at a 25-year low. And this is at the same time when sales of video games have increased from 2.6 billion from 1996 to 10.5 billion in 2009. So um, that shows that they don't correlate with each other. Uh, people point out that the prevalence of gamers amongst violent youths, like especially school shooters, is proof that somehow games are to blame. But they're forgetting that it's just simply because most families in this country have video games in their homes to begin with. So in general, they're going to be playing those games anyway. 67% of us have games in our home, according to the Entertainment Software Association. So why is this idea so popular? <clears throat> that video games cause violence in kids. Well, it's projection. And this is according to Henry Jenkins, a media scholar at USC. He says that adults are afraid. They uh, have fears about popular culture, and they transfer that fear towards the people that consume it, namely teenagers. Grown-ups moral panic about a real problem in our society, which is violence, is misdirected towards people who are in the least uh, the worst position to defend themselves from it, and that's kids and teens. They're a pretty soft target. I mean, they can't vote. They don't have the legal protections that adults have. But we ha what we have to do is trust them, trust kids. They know. They know the difference between reality and fantasy. When they play video games, they enter what Katie Salen and Eric Zimmerman refer to in their book, Rules of Play, Game Design, as the magic circle. It's a way of understanding game as, uh, gaming as distinct from uh, reality. A youth who's playing a game targeting an enemy, targeting enemy droids, he's using or she's using that game as it's designed to use. And they're still within that magic circle and they can comprehend that. They know that they're using this virtual reality as uh, a way to, to confront maybe some fears they have or to, to, uh, as just a fantasy you know, to let their aggressions loose. Again, Henry Jenkins, USC scholar, points out that primates, and we're talking about monkeys, chimps, <laughs> apes, they know the difference between play violence and real violence. Now, don't you think that human kids know at least that much too? So let's trust them to know the difference. He also goes on to question why, if video games are the catalyst for violence, how come we don't see more of these Columbine-type shootings like at video game arcades or at the movies? I mean, that's the place where the immediate stimulus for those games is occurring, yet we don't see anything like that. He also talks about these studies that are flawed. One of the, studies, uh, one of the flaws of these studies is that when they compare how aggressive or how excited kids get playing video games, they compare it to a really boring game. Like they're a game that has no thought whatsoever, no, no uh, characters that are interesting, nothing. It's just really boring. 
And then they give them, you know, a really cool game, like Mortal Kombat or something. So of course they're going to register a higher aggression level, a higher excitement level when they play the games. So <coughs> there's one more point I have for you. Um, the correlation between video games and violent behavior is shown. There's a correlation. But it's not a cause and effect. In other words, violent people are going to play violent video games. They're going to be attracted to all kinds of violent stuff, including movies, books, magazines, and everything else. So there's a connection there, but it has nothing to do with the cause and effect. The video games are not causing them to be violent. So <coughs> I shared the numbers with you guys on how video games don't cause violence in kids. I've also shown you why this myth is so popular. Um, I've also shared with you how kids know the difference between fantasy and reality. And you've also learned that studies don't prove that violence is caused by gaming because they're flawed. So the next time you hear someone blaming video games for violence, you might have something to enlighten you. <laughs> So Anthony, what did you think? Uh, she had a good introduction. I felt like I had a good understanding of her um, topic, which is violence in video games does not cause violence in children. And I got a good preview of all the, like, I think those three main points. Um, her statistics were good. She cited, um, uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but she cited them pretty well, his credentials. And, um, she has good examples like the gaming magic circle for the distinguishing reality and the video games. Uh, something she can improve on, maybe a little more projection of, or variety in her voice. But um, other than that, her eye contact was pretty good. And everything else seemed fine. She came back to her pretty main points at the end. All right. Yeah, all the structural stuff is really solid. I think you do a good job on that. I like the opening. It does seem a little strange because you open with uh, uh, kind of a rhetorical tool that sounds like you're going to be coming down on the other side, and then you kind of go in the opposite direction. I want to. I, I felt a little bit uh, denied when you didn't come back to the quote that you had from the one guy, the West Point uh, professor, and I thought, well. You need to confront that a little bit more directly, you know, because there's here's a, an observation that uh, seems pretty direct and sounds credible. And I, I know you have general answers later on on those issues, but it felt like that was a pretty powerful starting point, and it goes the opposite direction. So if you don't come back and talk about it, you're maybe shooting yourself in the foot a little bit using it as an attention device. But I did think that the supporting material was very nicely presented. You had uh, a good explanation on the first point about why the statistics don't bear out uh, the risk factors that you're talking about. You present a, a good theory and you've got an authority who's explained the theory about why people are going to that particular issue and I thought uh, you did a nice job on that. I think we could use a little bit more detail about the false assumptions in the studies. You mentioned that they're contrasting it to the boring video games for instance, and I suspect that that's true, but if you could pick out the particular studies that have reached these conclusions and show us what those games are, I'd be a lot more confident. I, you know, it's kind of a claim, it's a good challenge. Proving it is, I think, the part that's a little underdone on that point. I thought that uh, you could use a little bit more emotional appeal in your argument about, you know, uh, there's the one section where you talk about how kids are the ones least able to respond and fight back for themselves and defend themselves and I thought I got a little bit of that give us some examples about how you know kids get you know labeled or I don't want to say persecuted but blamed for things or how easy it is for people to jump to those conclusions simply because it's different you know the truth of the matter is here's a good emotional comparison people have been saying these things about younger generations for years and years and years and everybody knows that one uh, you're listening to that uh, you know jazz music what the hell's the matter with you you're listening to that rock music there's something going on there uh, you're you're uh, dancing in the discos all night and uh, taking drugs. The, the culture's going to hell in a handbasket. We're watching uh, video nasties on television, all those horrible, uh, you know, uh, 80s movies, you know, that kind of stuff. How come people aren't killed? You know, and it's just like there's always another generation that's looking at the earth.